the U.S. released its new Africa strategy, which states, I quote, great power competitors, namely China and Russia, are rapidly expanding their financial and political influence across Africa. They are deliberately and aggressively targeting their investments in the region to gain a competitive advantage over the United States. Close quote. And in 2020, the EU also released a report which it called Towards a Comprehensive Strategy with Africa, which worried about competition for natural resources. What does it tell us? This suggests that our continent will increasingly be a place where international rivalries play out. Mm. Governments and businesses from all around the world have been strengthening their diplomatic, strategic, and commercial ties with the continent. From 2010 to 2016, more than 320 embassies were opened in Africa. This is probably the biggest embassy building boom anywhere in the world, with Turkey alone opening 26 embassies in that time. America and France continue to give a military assistance and technology to anti-jihadism in the Sahel. China is now the biggest arms seller to sub-Saharan Africa and has defense technology ties with 45 countries. Russia has signed 19 military deals with African states since 2014. All rich Arab states are building bases on the Horn of Africa and hiring African mercenaries. This new, uh, these new scramblers, however, want more than just a share of what Africa has. They also want a stake in what the continent is trying to build. In the economies and growing global stature of the world's second most populous continent, the UN has said that by 2025, Africa will have more people than China currently, which then means we are becoming a bigger market for other people and for all sorts of things that they want to be able to do. The United States has 29 known military facilities in 15 countries in Africa, while France has bases in 10 countries. From 2010 to 2012, AFRICOM itself burned up 836 million as it expanded its reach across the region, primarily through programs to mentor, advise, and tutor African militaries. Using the pretext of the conflicts in Libya and Mali, France and the U.S. intervened militarily across the Sahel. In 2014, France set up the G5 Sahel, a military arrangement that included Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, and Niger, and expanded or opened new bases in Gao, Mali, Najamena, Chad, Niemi, Niger, and Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. The United States built an enormous drone base in Agadez, Niger, from which it conducts drone strikes and aerial surveillance across the Sahel and the Sahara Desert. In 2017, Turkey built its largest overseas military base and its first in Africa. This was in Somalia. Saudi Arabia and the UAE have launched attacks into Yemen from their positions in the Horn. Saudi Arabia has also recruited soldiers from Sudan. Some of these were children. Saudi Arabia also thought um, it tried to open a base in Djibouti. It thought to, uh, that it wants to open one in Djibouti. The UAE is set to open one in neighboring Somaliland. China's military influence stretches well beyond the base in Djibouti. In 2021, the People's Liberation Army conducted exercises in Cameroon, Gabon, Ghana, and Nigeria. Chinese expansion on the continent has worried other Asian powers, like Japan, which is now enlarging its base in Djibouti. India is developing a network of radar and listening posts around the Indian Ocean, but its plans to open a base in uh, the Seychelles 
was blocked by the country last year. It might still happen, who knows. In March this year, the Indian Army hosted its first military exercises with a number of African countries. European countries are not being left by the wayside. They are also stepping up their presence in the Sahel, aiming both to quell Islamic terrorism and stem the flow of migrants to Europe. The, EU, uh, the EU is also supporting soldiers from the G5 Sahel group. Though its role in the CAR car um, is the most high profile that Russia has on the continent, it is intensifying its links across Africa. The continent is clearly becoming a hotbed for terrorist and insurgency groups. A direct link to the war on terror and the NATO-led demise of Libya. Since AFRICOM was set up, a number of African states that received training from the US military have been wrecked by coups, insurgencies, violence, and volatility. We're talking now, um, the minister, about the silencing of guns, yet we see what is happening throughout our continent from West Africa to the Sahel to um, Northern Mozambique. And we are sitting down here on the tip of Africa. That's not to say that that is not coming to us. What are we doing about stopping those issues happening? We have some of the same conditions that exist in South Africa as what exists in Northern Mozambique. So it is not such a big stretch to think that we might see ourselves having to deal with issues like that um, in the future. Also, West Africa, East Africa, and the Sahel have seen an increase in the trafficking of narcotics from Asia. As U.S. stability, inverted commas, um, their stability operations in Africa have increased, militancy has spread. Insurgent groups have proliferated. Allies such as Rwanda, Mali, DRC, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Chad, and others have either faltered or committed abuses. Terrorism has increased on the continent, the number of failed states has risen, and the continent has become more unsettled. In conclusion, neo-colonialism, Nkrumah noted, seeks to fragment Africa weaken African state institutions, prevent African unity and sovereignty in order to insert its power to subordinate the aspirations of the continent for pan-African consolidation. Neither the OAU nor the AU have been able to realize the two most important principles of pan-Africanism, political unity and territorial sovereignty. The enduring presence of foreign military bases not only symbolizes the lack of unity and sovereignty amongst Africans, it also equally enforces the fragmentation and subordination of the continent's peoples and governments. African leaders, countries, and regional economic, um, what is it? Right? You know, you normally say it in short and then you try to say it long word. Um, so we, all of us as Africans, have agency. We cannot sit by and watch this new scramble happen to us as if we have no say, as if we cannot negotiate our terms, and as if we do not have options. One of the options that Africa has is to work more closely together so that when we negotiate, we do so with one voice and for the good of the whole continent, instead of desperate and competing voices that work to undermine each other. The African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is one such vehicle, because through it, we would have the largest free trade area in the world. Doing so would allow the power balance that Africa has to shift in our favor, which would be much more beneficial than when we have individual countries who are competing with each other and trying to undermine each other. Thank you. Mm.